Hi everybody, this is Bill Owen behind the microphone once again, after a bit of a hiatus on doing podcasts, but we're resuming them, and, and I'm really excited about this one. This is near to my heart. The commercials of old-time radio. I know a lot of the old-timers still like to talk about LSMFT and Halo Shampoo and so on. So we're going to kind of go over the history of it and, and recall some of those great commercials and some of the tidbits about them. If you go back to the early days of radio, there were no commercials because uh, well, most programs were presented as what they called a public service. But then the people who were supplying broadcast material, the, the music publishers, artists, and so on, they began to ease in low-key references to their companies or product. <laughs> In bits and pieces, advertising came to radio in such diverse forms as a lecture on the history of beards that ended with a few sentences about the joys of shaving with a safety razor and, curiously enough, invented by a man named Gillette. You know, it's interesting, Herbert Hoover supposedly had been Secretary of Commerce before he was president, and he supposedly was opposed to any kind of commercials on radio. Well, even though some commercials were very annoying, that's what really brought us the, the great aspects of radio and be able to afford hiring the comedians and musicians and so on. So it's, it's very significant that finally commercial radio appeared rather than public service radio. Public service radio just wouldn't have uh, held a candle to it. And then there was the introduction of orchestras like the A&P Gypsies. See how they, they get their advertising in surreptitiously? The Clico Club Eskimos. And the musicians used to actually dress up in Eskimo uniforms when they performed. I, I don't know how that worked when they were in Miami in the summertime. Uh, the first fully sponsored program was the Ever Ready Hour, which made its debut way back in 1923. Well, as radio advertising grew and grew, sponsors became more interested in moving their goods, naturally. Some of the early advertising was uh, they call institutional, designed to sell a company name rather than a specific product. For example, it carried through uh, the Golden Age with such sponsors as Bell Telephone, United States Steel, Hallmark Texaco, Firestone, the point of a commercial was to sell a specific product. The announcers in those days used to say things like, uh, rush right down to your neighborhood drugstore and ask for, or, or get some today. Or maybe, don't forget to put it on your shopping list. Well, through constant repetition, LSMFT, 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 or the use of celebrity testimonials, or or maybe any one of a number of advertising gimmicks, radio proved to be a tremendous sales tool for the advertiser. Oh, it did revolutionize uh, industry in America. Sponsor identification, of course, was extremely important. Well, the best way to achieve the highest percentage of sponsor identification was to integrate the commercials into the show's content, to involve the star in the commercial, to work the sponsor's name into the show's title, or or for a sponsor remain associated with one particular program or time slot for a long run. We're talking about LSMFT. It, it, was, uh, it was a famous line delivered over the click of a telephone key, telegraph key, if you remember. The announcer described the tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Oh, the Lucky Strike commercials, one of the most famous of all. And one of the uh, great comedians sponsored by Lucky's was, after the Jello days, was Lucky Strike, the American Tobacco Company. The commercials would often have a, a tobacco auctioneer saying, Soul American. And then they would say, It's Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina, and F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. They were real tobacco auctioneers, real pros, and they did a lot of money out of that. Which also reminds me of Lucky Strike Green Has Gone to War. That was a very well-known slogan back in 1942, shortly after Pearl Harbor, 
What do they mean? Lucky Strike Green has gone to war? Well, it always came in a traditional green-looking package of cigarettes, 20 cigarettes, of course, most packages. And uh, after, uh, after we did go to war, World War II, uh, they found that they, the copper, copper used in the green paint to print the label of the Lucky Strike packages, it was needed desperately to paint tanks and ships and literally go to war. So they were very patriotic and they boasted of it and they were entitled to. And uh, they now had a white package. But uh, Lucky Strike Green did go to war and Lucky Strike is still available, one of the leading cigarettes. Anyway, we're having fun talking about the old commercials and uh, among the sponsors who achieved the best sponsor identification over the years, how about this one? And now, Oxidol's own Ma Perkins. Or how about Jack Armstrong and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. So today, people who heard that program, they associate Wheaties with Jack Armstrong, the great teenage uh, hero of those days. And uh, how about... Jello again. This is Jack Benny. Get it? Jello again. Chasen Sanborn, Edgar Bergen, and Charlie McCarthy. Lucky Strike, we talked about. Again, Jack Benny. And Campbell Soup, a famous sponsor of Amos and Andy. And Rinso, again, for Amos and Andy. Oh, yes. How about uh, Eddie Cantor? He, the commercial went uh, for the smile of beauty. I Panna for the smile of beauty. And Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Oh, here's one of the greatest identifications of a sponsor. Ovaltine with Little Orphan Annie. Oh, uh, yeah. Tom Mix with Ralston. The, the Ralston straight shooters are on the air. Uh, how about Bob Hope? He'd say, that, this is Bob Pepson and Hope saying that if you brush your teeth with Pepson, you'll have a smile so fair that even Crosby will tip his hair. <laughs> Uh, ever sharp, take it or leave it. The pen that's guaranteed not for years, not for life, but guaranteed forever. I don't know how you can guarantee anything forever, but they they claimed it. Kellogg's, the singing lady. Johnson Wax. It's the Johnson Wax program starring Fibber McGee and Molly. And then Kraft, another one. This is Ben Crosby here in the old Kraft music hall. Fit Shampoo. Laugh a while. Oh, that was one of the one of the really great commercials. Laugh as the tune of Smile for Me, then you'd hear laugh a while, let a song be your style. Use Fitch shampoo. Don't despair. Use your head, save your hair. Use Fitch shampoo. Oh, how about, uh, oh, uh, Mars Cave and Dr. IQ. Monday night on NBC, I never missed that show. Campana Italian Bomb. The First Nighter, they were the sponsor. H.O. Oates, Bobby Benson's Adventures. Pell-Mell, The Big Story. Another one, Colgate. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man is on the air. Coca-Cola, Morton Downey. Helbros Watches, Quick as a Flash. Dr. Lyon's Tooth Powder. I mean, the announcer, Charles Lyon, always said, Dr. Lyon's Tooth Powder. Manhattan Merry Ground, a great musical program. Uh, the sponsors who maneuvered their names into the program titles, the A&P Bandwagon we mentioned, Maxwell House Showboat, the Fitch Bandwagon. Many newspapers now, they used to balk at listing the programs by these titles since this constituted free advertising. Think of that. So they would simply put Bandwagon or Showboat or the name of the star. There were a few curiosities of radio advertising that I recall, including Little Miss Babbo, who was only known as such on the air, but was in reality the child star Mary Small. And how about the early singing duo? Uh, not many of you recall them. Ernie Hare and Billy Jones, they were known practically simultaneously as the, as the Tasty East Jesters or the Best Foods Boys, the interwoven pair for various sponsors. Oh, by the way, there was a well-publicized lawsuit involving Tallulah Bankhead when Pell-Mell 
uh, Prell, not <laughs> Pell-Mell's a cigarette, when Prell Shampoo introduced their unbreakable plastic tube. They tried to establish a commercial character. I'm Tallulah, the tube of Prell. Miss Backhead, oh, she got a cease and desist order, claiming she was the one and only Tallulah, and the courts agreed. Probably the most famous living trademark was the shrill-voiced bellboy named Johnny, who worked for Philip Morris Cigarettes to the tune of On the Trail from Ferdy Grofe's Grand Canyon Suite. Johnny would shout, Call for Philip Morris. Oh, oh, that was so familiar on so many programs. And the part of Johnny was usually played by Johnny Roventini, occasionally by Freddie Buddy Douglas. They're both midgets. And I uh, happened to meet the nephew of Johnny Roventini one time I was giving a talk at a local club in Rockland County, New York. And sure enough, he's, he raised his hand and says, Johnny was my uncle. Isn't that something? Small world. Pictures and life-size blow-ups of Johnny were prominently featured in cigar stores on the radio. Johnny was described as stepping out of thousands of store windows across the country. <laughs> and here's an anecdote of that. It is alleged, only alleged, that one night in a restaurant when a waiter dropped a tray of glasses, Groucho Marx happened to be there. He filled the silence by shouting, That was Johnny, you heard, stepping out of thousands of store windows across the country. Well, to list all the catchphrases and jingles identified with particular products over the years would be impossible. But let's, let's look at a few of them, call them, recall them, Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, 12 full ounces, that's a lot. Twice as much for a nickel, too. Pepsi-Cola is the drink for you. Nickel, 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 trickle, 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 trickle. Oh, everybody heard that commercial in those days. It was composed by uh, Austin Herbert Croom Croom Johnson from an old English hunting song. It was called You Ken John Peel. But the lyrics were written by Alan Bradley Kent. And he was later just Alan Kent. He became an announcer. And he had quite an astounding career. Uh, he announced Blackstone, the Magic Detective. He was a writer on the Dreft Star Playhouse. He announced for Frank Crummett and Julia Sanderson. That was that husband and wife musical team that she sang and he played the ukulele. Alan announced for Hobby Lobby and also the old gold Paul Whiteman Hour and for the great soap opera of Pepper Young's Family. Well, continuing our remembrances, there was Super Suds. Super Suds, Super Suds, lots more Suds with Super Suds. Richer, longer lasting too. They're the Suds with Super Do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Super Suds. Oh, one of the leading brands of those days. Oh, how about Adam Hatz? Anybody remember that one? You, Ginger Gray, the singer, she'd say, uh, I go for man who wears an Adam hat. And then you'd hear a whistle from Lanny Gray, just whistling. <whistles> oh, I go for man who wears an Adam hat. <whistles> Whoa. Rinso, another famous one. You heard a bird call, a, a Bob White whistle a couple of times, and that was actually done by a man named Henry Boyd, just for the record. Then you heard a girl simmer singer coming in with Rinso White, Rinso Bright, Happy Little Wash Day Song. I don't know if wash days are happy for everybody, but they were for the Rinso users, apparently. Tide, remember, tides in, dirt's out, tides in, dirt's out. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. T-I-D-E, Tide. And one of the most beautiful commercials was Luster Cream Shampoo. The song Toyland by Victor Herbert, sung by Kenny Carson. I remember seeing him in person coming out one time in the midst of the radio show. He just came up, put his hand over his ear, and, and sang the Luster Cream song. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream shampoo. And the rival Halo shampoo, Halo, everybody, halo. Halo is the shampoo that glorifies your hair. Halo, everybody, halo. So halo, shampoo, halo. <laughs> and my dad always got a kick out of the Life Boy one. You'd hear a, a foghorn after the announcer said, 
Life Boy really stops, then you'd hear, B-O. It was a human voice, but it sounded like a, like a foghorn. Broma Seltzer, the, the effect of a steam locomotive is, Broma Seltzer, Broma Seltzer, Broma Seltzer. That was a good one. Does soap. Does, does everything. A lot of jokes made out of that one. Pell-mell cigarettes. The first announcer, Ernest Chappell, he would say, Ernest Chappell, he would say, outstanding. And the second announcer, Cy Harris, would add, and they are mild. And one of the great announcers was Nelson Case, had such a smooth voice, and he was associated with Ivory Soap for many years. And the slogan was, Ivory Soap, 99 and 44 one hundredth percent pure. It floats. Well, it turned out that it floated accidentally, and they were scrambling around trying to figure out what to do, how to get to sell a soap that floats. And they said, wait, let's make it uh, a plus sign and, and uh, advertise the fact that it floats. It's easy to find in the bathtub. Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription, the announcer would say. That is not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. Perhaps your doctor or dentist has given you a few anison tablets to relieve headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. That's anison, A-N-A-C-I-N, anison. It's one of the more annoying commercials, the way he delivered it. Eversharp, we mentioned that, the pen that's guaranteed not for years, not for life, but guaranteed forever. Doan's Pills, another very annoying commercial. They featured a, a dramatization of some homely situation involving a case of uh, a nagging headache, such as grandma's participation in a Virginia reel. Well, someone would always recommend that she try Doan's Pills, at which point the announcer screamed, literally, good advice. It was Schick Injector Razors. Push, pull, click, click, change blades that quick. And that got Henry Morgan a lot of trouble. He used to make fun of his... Uh, sponsors commercials and, and products and uh, he said one time push pull click click change blades that nick no no i think it was wait a minute pull pull quick quick nick 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 that was it <laughs> whiz candy it was a circular candy bar and the announcer again very loud whiz the best nickel candy there is and a voice would say you can say that again all right i will Whiz, the best nickel candy there is. And a very popular one, Bull of a Watch is one of the shortest commercials they, that ran ever, but they would say, the time is 8 o'clock, B-U-L-O-V-A, Bull of a Watch time. Royal Pudding, he heard the male singer singing, Royal Pudding, rich, rich, rich with flavor, smooth, smooth, smooth as silk, more food energy than sweet, fresh milk. Kind of a delightful commercial. How about the, uh, a, a tune from uh, Ten Little Indians, a children's song. You may be familiar with that for Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. You'd hear the bartender say, what'll you have? And the voice would say, Pabst Blue Ribbon. And then the bartender says, what'll you have? Second voice, Pabst Blue Ribbon. And then the bartender again, what'll you have? Oh, well, you know what they say. Paps Blue Ribbon, and the chorus would say, Paps Blue Ribbon Beer. They did a lot of advertising of uh, professional boxing matches. Gem Razor Blades, not as famous as Gillette, but interesting, because they had a metronome, and they'd bring it up, and they'd, they'd hold it in the background, and then you hear a, a clock tolling in the distance, and a very deep, ominous voice say, Avoid. The clock is going all this time. Five o'clock. Shadow. Use gem blades. Use gem blades. Use gem blades. Very effective commercial. Gillette, look sharp. You hear the prize fight bell. Feel sharp. And the prize fight bell again. Be sharp. And again the bell. And use Gillette blue blades with the sharpest edges ever honed. I remember as a youngster, I had to look up the word honed. Camel cigarettes, uh, very simple. They'd say C-A-M-E-L-S. And lava soap, oh, was that a popular commercial? A drum you would hear, and then all of a sudden, L-A-V-A, L-A-V-A, 
Lava is a very powerful soap. If your hands were really greasy, lava was the answer. No exaggeration. Crisco. Keep cooking with Crisco. It's all vegetable. It's digestible. Oh, how about uh, how about Longines watches? Frank Knight is associated with that account, and a very distinguished voice. He would say, Longines, the world's most honored watch. Well, we could go on, but those are the commercials that first come to mind as I hark back to those halcyon days, the wonderful days of what we call the golden age of old-time radio. And commercials were certainly a big and memorable part of it. Well, folks, that's another podcast we put away. It's kind of a long one. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Bill Owen saying goodbye for now. And remember, LSMFT means fine tobacco.